What is up everybody? It's your boy Duty back again with another video and this time we're taking a look at our boy DSP's daily rap video after another day of another crabs Disney princess treasure and of course chill with Phil on the night stream and in honor of Disney princess uh crabs treasure Disney princess Phil is back that's right say say hello to Disney princess Phil anyway let's see I guess what Phil had to say on the daily wrap good evening everyone how you doing welcome to the daily wrap for what was wednesday the 8th of may 2024 also known as my final consecutive streaming day of this week what a fun week it was we had major progress in games like fallout 4 and another crab's treasure <clears throat> huge progress in street fighter 6 getting zangief to master uh, we had a fun react day and we even had a nice late night hangout session tonight instead of gameplay, which was a nice thing for variety purposes. So, really had a good week. Uh, today was a great day overall. We started off with a jam-packed podcast. We had a lot to talk about today, including updates on everything going on with my playthroughs. Um, you know, some updates on various news stories and the like. Uh, and of course, we had some Q&A. Uh, first stream's gameplay was Another Crab's Treasure, which was weird because they patched the game and nerfed my build. That's kind of frustrating. You know, the game's relatively new. Only, what, two weeks old? And for the fact that they patched it and changed key gameplay elements, like I had these two stowaways equipped that were giving me a certain amount of damage boost, but then I would lose defense. Well, they completely nerfed them to be half as effective, but give you, like, four times less defense. I was like, uh, no one's ever going to use that. That's a huge waste of time when there's other stowaways that are much better. So, basically, I had to change up my build, but the good thing is today... We continued to search for optional content, and we found a lot of optional content, including optional boss fights, like a super boss fight that ended up giving me a super powerful ability that now I'm using in combat all the time, and it is kicking everything's ass, including bosses. Um, we continued to explore. We found a new outfit. We found a bunch of new upgrades and things. I now have a 70% stagger build. So basically, after a few hits, everything staggers, including bosses, which is really awesome. Um... Yeah, we continued to explore all the optional stuff. Then we went to the Veil, which is the next major dungeon. And we basically kind of beat the entire Veil. And that unlocked the next portion of the story, which looks like it's going to be a way to um, to go inside of a dungeon and get this, like, battery. And that's going to allow us to power those little robotic crabs we've seen in the game. And that's going to open up all new side content and probably the end of the game. So, good stuff so far. Had a great stream of that today. Late night stream tonight was literally chill. Alrighty, so only Phil, only Phil would complain about the difficulty of a Disney, <laughs> a Disney princess game. That's right. That's what I'm calling it. Disney princess, uh, Disney princess, uh, crabs treasure. That's right. Uh, I'm playing the game, uh, just to see what, it, what's it about. A lot of people said it's a good game. Uh, it's easy as all hell, Phil. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't know why you're getting so stuck on these bosses. And dying so much it's not a hard game and no it's not like dark souls or elden ring the parry system is similar but it's not the same phil and it the difficulty is nowhere near as difficult as say dark souls or a souls like game so the comparison is extremely stupid the only comparison is that you you have to parry that that that's essentially what it is that that's the only kind of comparison i see with the game but of course anytime phil finds anything fucking remotely difficult he's gonna bitch and complain about it and he did yesterday he complained about uh crab's treasure and how they nerfed his build and how he had to respec his entire build because uh he couldn't you know it, it was too difficult mind you don't forget the guy was just dying non-stop the bosses before the nerf imagine how how much more he's gonna die after the fact so uh, only Phil would find a game, a cute game like this difficult. God, it, it's, uh, now we know why he wage quit or he rage quit Kirby and, uh, Mario Brothers. Cause, cause these cutesy games are just way too difficult for such a, uh, competent gamer as DSP. Good Lord. Anyway, let's keep going. With Phil, just hang out with me for a couple hours and talk about anything. And we had discussion about so many different things. I was very happy to have those open discussions with the audience. Oddly enough, though, here's the funny thing. So one of the reasons I wanted to do the late night hangout stream is because I noticed in the last week there were various topics that people were getting excited for on the podcast. We'd start talking, but then we'd run out of time. And I was thinking, oh, this is a good opportunity 
for us to now talk about those at length on the show. I'm not kidding you. Like earlier today on the podcast, we're talking about the FGC days and things like that. And people were very excited to hear about my takes on that <clears throat> and my history in competitive Street Fighter. Tonight, no one brought it up whatsoever. We had two hours to do that kind of discussion. No one brought it up. I'm like, well, I tried, but we still had a good time. <clears throat> and overall, I just want to say thanks this week. Great streaming week for engagement and support and everything was very good. I have zero complaints. All right, before we get into the whole support nonsense here, I do want to talk about chill with Phil, or as I like to call it, uh, chill with hateful slurs. Um, the reason why no one brought it up, Phil, and again, I, you, you, so let me, let me, let me give you guys a, a little, a little, a little background here. So I've been watching a lot of Cyrax stuff. Not that I'm going to get into the Cyrax vortex, but, uh, I, I know a little bit about, uh, Cyrax and I've been watching, um, uh, uh a couple channels, Nward Boy and a few others that track and, and clip, uh, Cyrax. And what I'm learning is, um... He just doesn't get it. He's very delusional. Cyrax, very delusional. And I see that with Phil. Phil's very similar. He he, he displays the same mannerisms and uh, the same mental patterns. I'm going to say mental patterns as Phil. Where they just don't get why certain things occur. And, uh, and, and the reason why I bring this up is because the reason LARPers were bringing up your FGC and your Street Fighter days were to bait you into a fucking rage spaz that that's what people were doing phil because they know that anytime anyone asks you about your fgc days or evo or your street fighting days you're gonna go on a fucking rant about tony cannon net code the fgc how you were a whistleblower how they they tried to black uh blackball you and you just go on these fucking rants and you're not smart enough to understand this you're not on you're not you're not you're not intelligent enough to understand the reason why these people bring this up is to fucking bait you. They were baiting you into a rant, and you did it. You spent your whole fucking podcast ranting and raving about Street Fighter, about Evo, about the Cannon Brothers, Netcode. You just, you, you can't help yourself. You can't help yourself because uh, someone said it really well uh, yesterday, and I can't remember who, who it was. My apologies. But they were talking about how Phil is upset because he's not in the in crowd. He he went into Street Fighter in the very beginning, before there was any money or, or, or what have you. And in his mind, he really thinks that he was the catalyst for why esports and, and, and Street Fighter and Evo blew up. He thinks that he should be praised and given the credit by Justin Wong and all of these really good Street Fighters for why they're making bank and he's not and that upsets him he's up oh i remember what it was shinko big up shinko shinko was talking about it on his a podcast and he was talking about how this man is just jealous he's salty and jealous because he's not in the in crowd the reason why he talks about um corruption and and all this shit is because he's not able to be part of that he's not able to be part of the fgc and be part of getting sponsorships being in tournaments being highlighted as one of the good players he's upset because uh he he can't he's not one of them but the problem phil is is that you could have been one of them even if you were a so-so player if you wouldn't have been such a fucking douchebag you you treat your life as if it's wwe you treat it like it's wrestling and you decided oh i'm gonna be the heel i'm gonna be the jerk i'm gonna uh, you know i'm i'm a okay player so for me to get uh credibility or get some respect or, or get attention I, I need to be the asshole it, essentially the ltg route and when people were just like oh okay whatever you're an okay player you talk too much shit you can't really back it up and you're nobody and you get upset because you, you, you you're not when people talk about the fgc and esports and street fighter you're never brought up into those conversations because you're a fucking nobody. You're a nobody. And that bothers you, Phil. We, 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 that is your kryptonite. If you ever want Phil to get triggered on a, on a podcast, uh, you know how he talks about now, oh, I, I don't talk about the drama. I avoid detractor drama and so on, which he never does. He always bites. Uh, just look at that happy gamer rant. Um, talk about Street Fighter. Talk about Evo, Street Fighter, 
uh, the Cannon Brothers, and he will fucking take the bait. He won't shut the fuck up. And he's just waiting for him to... I'm, we're just waiting for him to say something so incredibly, incredibly egregious and terrible that it gets clipped, it gets sent to the, to, a, to the certain group of people that will blow it up, and Phil will spend the next two or three months feeling even more saltier than he already does. So let's keep going. You know, had a great time. Thank you so much for that. Two thumbs up. Okay, so... That is it for this week. I'm off from streaming tomorrow. I hope that you all have a safe and fun day. Remember, you can always get caught up on all my playthroughs here on DSP Gaming. You can get caught up on the React Show, DSP versus the Internet, over on DSP React. And the Throwback Channel has daily multiple new content, whether it's the ending of Final Fantasy 13, which we're about to hit, heading into the stride of the Fallout 3 playthrough. Okay, nobody cares. Uh, he's talking about, you know, all the garbage and no one cares about it. Uh, the one thing he did say right before I cut him off was support. Support was great, blah, blah, blah. Okay, again, yet another fucking day. Yet another fucking day where One Minute Man wasn't there. And the other dense, OIC, of course OIC, a.k.a. Lisa Lou, OIC, and probably Dan the Man. I don't know if Dan the Man and OIC are the same person, but Dan the Man has decided that in lieu of One Minute Man's departure, he needs to step up and be that super dead. So it's, it's, it seems like be like three people now. Three fucking people. Haseo, and not so much Haseo, but every so often Haseo. Dan the Man and uh, OIC. They seem to have joined forces to prop up this fucking dead channel. And if uh, if you guys are on Twitter, if you guys want to follow someone named Gamerface Gaming, he does essentially a breakdown every single day, uh, every stream of Phil, and he shows how many tips he received, how many super chats he received, how many viewers were there, um, uh, the, the positive negative ratio of the video of the stream, he kind of populates all that. It's a really good, nice snapshot. And if you go through that for the last, ever since one minute man left, which is 18 days and counting, you see, it's the same fucking people every day. It's Lisa Lou. It's OIC It's La La lady charisma or Dan, the man. These are the fucking dents that are leading the leaderboard. And let's say everyone, I think last night it was, was let's say last night. Let's see. So the first stream. The big dent that came to save the day was Lisa Lou, OIC, dropping a 50 bomb. And then last night's stream, which fucking was pathetic, he got 45 bucks. Dan the man dropped $25. How long are these people going to keep doing this? We all know OIC is one fickle ass motherfucker. And he'll come in for a month or so and drop some serious cash. And then he'll move on to somebody else or do something else and be gone for a few more months. How long is this going to last, Phil? Anyway, I'm actually going to be doing the breakdown now, the financial analysis of the week, and we're going to see how Phil did. I think, looking at it initially, I think he did a, he had a better week this week than last week. Uh, so no ham sandwiches for the day off. Uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out.